Hi, welcome to the second part of the DevOps Capstone project. If you don't know, please check out the first part, which will be linked below. And this is whole part of the series where we'll be building a DevOps project, which is a QR code generator. And in today's video, we're going to Dockerize our given boilerplate project. So we'll create Docker files, push the Docker images to Docker Hub, and also set up a CI CD pipeline. So this video will be a bit long, but we'll cover all the necessary bits to build our Docker containers. And if you're new to containerization in Docker, I highly recommend checking this video out, which is a quick refresher on Docker and containers. Hi, I'm Rishab. This is Rishab in Cloud, and let's get started. So the first thing you'll need is the boilerplate code that is available at reshapkumar 7 slash DevOps QR code. So this will be the GitHub repo that you will use as the base of the project. So what you can do is fork this repo. And as you can see, there are some instructions here. So the application has a front end, which is in Next.js, and you have a back end, which is the API. And what happens is the user goes to the front end and submits a URL, the backend generates the QR code and gives it back to the user. And you also have some instructions to run this project locally. Since I'll be covering this project in AWS, I do have it cloned locally. So you can see I have the same API and front-end folder. And I'll quickly go over how you can run this project locally before we containerize it. And just for better readability, I'm going to take off my face from the code edit. So as you can see, we have main.py, and this is our API. So if I go back to the GitHub repo, you can see for running locally, you'll have to, I'll change the instructions, but you'll have to fork this repo, make sure you're in the API directory, create a virtual environment install the requirements.txt and also make sure you have set up AWS access and secret key since we'll be using S3 storage to store the QR codes that will be generated. So let's go ahead and do that. So if you go to the env.example, you'll need to create a .env file with these secrets set to the appropriate value. I've already done that, as you can see. I'll not be revealing these secrets here. So let me open up my terminal. And as you can see, I am in the root of the project. So let's go to the API directory. Now create a virtual environment. This is the command to create the virtual environment. Once it's created, we'll install the required packages, which are listed in requirements.txt. So let me activate my virtual environment by typing in source, vnv, bin, and then activate. There we go. The command will vary depending on your operating system. So if you're using Windows, you can look up how to activate a virtual environment in Windows. And now let's do pip install dash r requirements.txt. So there we go. We have our all of the requirements installed. Now let me clear this up. Since I already have the secrets configured in .env, I can do uvcon main app dash reload. So this will give us our API on port 8000. So if I copy this, open it up in the browser, you can see we don't have any default routes in our main.py. So our, our API endpoint is slash generate dash QR. And this is where we'll be sending the URL to generate the QR code. So if I open up a new terminal here, and now we'll move on to getting the front end running locally. So in order to get the front end running locally, we'll have to go into the front end directory and do npm install since this is a Next.js project. And now we can do npm run dev. So our front end is running on local host port 3000. Let's open that up. There we go. So we have the QR code generator running. So if I enter a URL here, like example.com. So it looks like we got some error. Let's go to our terminal and the other window where our API is running. Oh, I forgot to add my bucket name. 
which is a crucial step. So I have to change this to the bucket name of my bucket that I have in AWS setup. So this is the bucket that I have set up as storage for the QR code. So let's go back in our main.py, paste that in just in case. Let's restart it. So control C and you recon main app reload. Okay. Now, if I go here, it should still give me the same response. But now if we type in example.com, you can see that it generated the QR code. And if I go to my terminal, you can see we got a post request to generate the QR code for example.com. And we got a 200 OK status. We can also check our cloud bucket. If I do a refresh, um, today is July 31st. So we see that the example.com PNG was created. And if you would like, you can scan this QR code and it should take you to example.com. But you get the idea. We have the project running locally, which is awesome, right? So our front end works. Our backend is generating QR code and storing it in AWS S3. And our front end and backend can talk to each other. Now, the next part would be to dockerize our API and front end. So let's first start with the API itself. So for the API, it's written in Fast API, which is a Python library to build APIs. So what I'm going to do is close my terminal here, make sure I'm in the API directory and create a new file called Docker file. So Docker file acts as a script or set of instructions to build your container image. And as I said, check out the refresher on understanding Docker and containers. The video will be in the description if you're new to it but I won't be covering the fundamentals in this one. So the first line is usually pulling a base image. So we'll be using Python 3.9. So if I go py from Python and you can look up Python Docker Hub images. So if we go to a browser, Docker Hub, Python, you'll find the official images and all the different versions that you can use. For simplicity, I'm just gonna go with 3.9 for now. There we go. So this uses Python 3.9 as the base image. So the next thing would be to set the working directory inside our container. And we can do that by typing in work there, which stands for working directory. And we'll set this to be user source app. Now we'll need the dependencies, right? If you remember, we installed the requirements.txt with pip to install all the packages locally. So we'll need to copy those over to our working directory within our container. Now for the install, as you can see, Copilot is suggesting we need to do a pip install. So we'll run this command. So run basically will help us run the command pip install no cache dash r requirements.txt. Now we also have to copy the main.py. Um, so we can copy the entire directory or we can specify the individual file that we want to copy to the container. Now we also have to run the uvcon command. So if you remember in our terminal to run the fast API, we ran this command. So uvcon main app reload. So we also need that in our container image itself. So the command is uvcon main app. And for the host, we'll use 0, .0, .0, 0.0.0.0 so that it's local host. And the these are comma separated, but basically it'll be a one line command like we saw in our terminal. We can also specify the port and it's a good thing to hard code the port here so that there are no inconsistencies when both of the containers would talk. And instead of 8000, which is the default, we'll go with 80. So this looks good. What I'm going to quickly do is add some comments. Okay, so I've added some comments, you know, for better readability. Um, so it's basically what all the steps that I described. And we have our Docker file for the API container ready. Now let's build it by using the Docker build command. So let me quickly clear my screen here. So Docker build and dash T will allow us to tag our image. So let's name this DevOps QR code API. I think that's a good name. So docker build dash t, the tag is DevOps QR code API, and we'll have a period at the end, which tells us where the Docker file is. So as you can see, I'm not in the root of the project, but I'm in the API directory, which is where our Docker file is. 
currently, as you can see. So if I hit enter, it'll start building our image for the API. So as you can see, the build is complete. It'll take some time depending on your internet connection and your machine. But once it's built, what we'll do is repeat these steps for the front end, which is in Next.js. So similarly for our front end, what we'll do is create a Docker file in the right directory, which is the front end Next.js. And now instead of pulling the base image as Python, we'll be using Node. So specifically, we'll be using the Node 18 Alpine as the base image and we'll be setting the work directory to be slash app. Now for the node-based projects, or specifically for Next.js, you need package.json and package-lock.json. This is similar to requirements.txt. So let's copy those to our container. And you can also use wildcards like star. This means anything that matches yarn.lock will be added to our will be added to our container. Similarly, we'll do that for package-lock.json. And let's also add the pnpm. I don't use it, but just to be safe. Okay, so there we go. And now we can also run a multi-line command. So this exact bit is from the Next.js documentation, which basically runs the correct command based on the preferred package manager that we'll be using. Now let's copy the front-end files, so which is in our front-end Next.js folder, which we already are in. So I'm just gonna copy that directory to the working directory, which is app. And now we'll run the build command, which is npm run build, and we'll expose the port 3000. Now in order to start the Next.js server, we'll have a command for that which is npm and then comma separated start so our docker image when it is run as a container will have port 3000 where our front end application will be available so what i can do now is create the image by going into the correct directory so clear and make sure you are in the front end nextjs directory and run the docker build command so docker build dash t, we'll tag this as DevOps QR code. Let me see what did I tag the other one. DevOps QR code API. So this will be QR code front end. And then period, which means we are telling it where the Docker file is. So now again, we'll wait for it to build our Docker image. And after a few seconds, we have our Docker image for both API and now front end ready. Now, just to test it out, let's run these Docker images locally and see if we can have our QR code generator working. So let's run the API container first. So Docker run dash D, which means it will be in detach mode and we'll name this DevOps QR API. This will be the container name. And now we'll also specify the port, which the API container will be running on port 80. And we'll have to specify the image that we want to use. So we named our image DevOps QR code API. There we go. Let's hit enter and we'll get the container ID back. Now, similarly, we'll run the front end. So again, this is in detach mode name this as devops qr front end the port will expose is 3000 again make sure that when we cloned the project and we were running it locally so all of the both the front end and the api are not running locally because uh, especially for front end we are using the same port so it will fail if you're if the port is already consumed by some other application and the name of the image was devops-qr-code-frontend. So let's hit enter. So we have two containers running. If I do docker ps, we'll see we have the front end and the API running. And let's go to our front end, which is being forwarded to localhost port 3000. So if I refresh this tab, you can see we are being greeted by the homepage of our application. So let's try 
a URL. Let's go with google.com and let's see if it works. So there seems to be some problem. Let me open the developer tab and open the console. So you can see that the connection was refused because let's go to our next JS. I'm pretty sure I know the answer. It is because of the different port. Since in our Docker file for our API, we are running this on port 80 instead of the port 8000 where it will be sending that connection request. So what I'm going to do is stop the container for our API. So Docker stop the API container and now run it by mapping the port to 8000 instead. Okay, so I couldn't run the 8000 to 80 because we already have this container name occupied. So we'll have to remove it first. So docker rm and then the container name, which is DevOps QR API. So now you can see it removed it. And let's run the command. Again, the key highlight is that I'm using, I'm mapping the 8000 port here. So now if we go to localhost 8000, you can see our API is running. Earlier it was running on port 80 for my local host. So now if I send the generate QR code, you can see we are getting back a QR code for google.com. If you want to test it, you can scan this and it should take you to google.com. But it means that our containers are working. So both our front end and API are running as containers. We created the Docker file and build the images. And we use those images to run our Docker containers. Awesome. Now the next thing, now the next thing to do would be push these images to Docker Hub so that they are available in some place central. Now let's go to Docker Hub. As you can see, I have logged in with my account and you can see all of my public Docker images here. So we'll create a repository. We'll name this DevOps QR code frontend. There we go. This is the Docker image for front end of the DevOps capstone project. There we go. So we'll create that. And now you'll get some instructions on how to push to this Docker Hub image we just created. So first of all, what we'll need is I'll have to tag the image as latest or you can use any version. So you could do, you know, 0.1 or 1.1. This helps with versioning of Docker images as they are updated over the time. And also we have to tag it with my username since this will be residing in Docker Hub. So we can do that by tagging the local image. So Docker tag, the local image was called Docker, sorry, DevOps dash QR dash code dash frontend, I believe. And if you are not sure, you can double check by typing or by scrolling up, which is DevOps QR code frontend. So DevOps dash QR dash code dash frontend, which is correct. Or you can do the Docker images command like I did, and you can find what all images were named as when, when you created them. So this is the name we are going for. So this is local, right? And we want it to be tagged as Rishab Kumar 7 slash. So this is the username slash the image. So go back and type that in. Oops, I have Rishabh Kumar 7 twice. So let me get rid of that. There we go. And also tag that as latest. Now we can run the command that was provided by Docker Hub, which is the push command. So once we have it tagged, we can do Docker push, whatever the image name is, and make sure to include the latest tag. And you can see it starts pushing to Docker Hub. So now it has finished and you can refresh your Docker Hub page for that image. And you can see we got the latest push, as it says, a few seconds ago. And now you can pull this exact image since it is a public Docker Hub image. Awesome. Now you'll have to do the same thing for the API. So for the API, you know, you'll have to create a new repository within Docker Hub, call it DevOps QR Code API. 
and then tag your local image to the appropriate image name of Docker Hub and then push it. I'm not going to do it because it's exactly the same steps, just the image name changes to API. And that is how you push your locally built images to Docker Hub. So as for this video, I looked at the timestamp and it's already pretty long. I do want to cover CI CD for pushing the images to Docker Hub as soon as we make some changes to Docker file. So yeah, tag along with this series. I'll definitely include it as a separate video on the series on how to do that using GitHub Actions. And hopefully you learned how you can create a Docker file and how you can create containers for your application and push it to a public repository like Docker Hub. And feel free to use any of the other container repositories like GitHub has its own container registry. Google and AWS has their own. So feel free to use those. And to help with the algorithm, please make sure you like and comment. It helps to support this channel. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace.